it's your lovely Abby Dagren and welcome back to my channel lovelies. Today I'll be continuing a series on my channel that deals with natal chart analysis and today I'll be doing one on Chloe Bailey. I'll be speaking on her personality traits, her characteristic traits based off of her natal chart and I will also be speaking on how her natal chart placements have helped a lot in regards to her success. So please stay tuned for the rest of my video lovelies. If you have not yet become a part of the Abby Dagren family, then this is your calling to do so. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when I upload videos on the daily. Also, please make sure you hit that like button because I know you guys will love this video. And last but not least, please make sure you share this video with everyone you know. Whether it's your friends, your family members, your enemies, anyone in general who really loves and supports this content. Now let's get right into the video, lovelies. Chloe Bailey was born on July 1st, 1998, so this qualifies her to be a Cancer, and because of this placement, she tends to be someone who is very intuitive, and she tends to be someone who has a water sign placement. And because she has that water sign placement, it really helps with her intuition, how she talks to people, how she deals with people, she's very emotional, and she's very she's able to understand people in a way that people probably will not understand she is emotionally vulnerable so that's something that she really loves but because she's a cardinal sign she's someone who loves to have a forefront of things so she loves to lead she loves to always be a go-getter and just have that lovely go-getter attitude and that's something that she's very great at and that's something that really benefits her because she's able to have two worlds in one next up is her moon in libra and with this placement she tends to also be a cardinal sign so she's someone who is going to be charismatic and she's gonna be very charming. She's someone who is very irresistible and she's very intelligent. She's someone who's very funny and she just loves to have great conversations. Also, she's someone who's very smart and she's very elegant, she's very fair, but she can be very indecisive. She needs balance in her life. She is self-indulgent and she loves to depend on others. So being dependent is something that comes with this placement. They do tend to be dependent on others. So they're always gonna ask for help and they're always going to make sure that they're going to ask for help all the time. They at times can have a lot of vanity. They're very adaptable and they just could never be alone. Next up is her Mercury and Leo and with this placement she tends to be someone who's very vocal as to how she feels and she's someone who's very brave and she's gonna speak how she is. She's someone who loves to have an authoritarian manner and she loves to talk in that way. She's someone who is known to draw in a crowd with her incredible flair. She's also someone who likes to speak in a way that other people will just feel safe around them and inspired by them. She's also someone who is very self-centered in regards to her thinking. So she's going to think for herself first and she's going to think about herself first and do things for herself. And she's also the type of person who people just love to listen to. They tend to be very great speakers and they tend to be the type of people that could be motivational speakers and they're just very great at speaking. Next up is her Venus and Gemini. And with this placement, she wants a relationship in regards to friendship. So you just so happen to meet each other and you're still friends. Communication is something that she needs in this relationship. Makes sense because Gemini is ruled by Mercury and they just love to communicate. They do have a lot of humor. They love to have fun. They love to make jokes sometimes at their partners or with their partners or they're just very funny people. They do need mental stimulation in order for them to stay in a relationship. They are very short-tripped. 
They love to use wit to attract others. They're very playful Métis. They do have a very big group of friends and they want to have good conversations and good manners. They do tend to omit rather than lie. They are natural flirts. They need someone who gives them their freedom. And they do like variety a lot. Next up is her Mars and Gemini. And with this placement, she has a lot of vital energy. She has a lot of versatility. She's very versatile. She does have a lot of wit and eloquence and she has great networking skills. So she's great at wanting to get to know other people and she's great at making a good network for herself because she's very much witty and she has a lot of energy. So people just love to be around her and they just love to be surrounded around her. She's very brilliant and she is a stand-up artist. She loves to build a large network of contacts. Sometimes, though, with this placement, she can lack focus. She can talk a lot and this is because Gemini is ruled by Mercury, so it makes sense. And sometimes there could be impatience and sometimes she can lose something or someone in pursuit of a new experience. Next up is her Jupiter in Pisces, and this is actually a great placement for her. And she's the type of person with this placement, she tends to be very satisfied, and she has a very kind heart. So that's something that really works in her advantage. But because it is Jupiter and Pisces, she does tend to be a daydreamer and easily influenced. However, with the daydreamer part, because of the occupation she's in, which is music, and artistry, that's something that is beneficial for her. So her being a daydreamer is going to help her in regards to how she makes her music and how she is as a person. Also with this placement, they tend to have a moral code that includes helping people who are less fortunate. So helping people is something that she loves to do. And that's just something she just wants to do out of the kindness of her heart it's just something that she's been raised with and that's just her moral code and that's something that she loves to do next up is her saturn and taurus and with this placement she does have complete freedom of making her choices she's someone who is the most reliable sign out here in regards to this placement and this makes them very dependable and very responsible she must have a firm order to cure foundation in her life in order for her to feel comfortable. She does not adapt easily and tend to fear the new and the untried. She's constantly in fear that she does not have enough like love, property, material things. And this makes her tend to be maybe selfish, even withdrawn and stingy, but not in a way that is in a negative way, but because she just feels like she doesn't have enough of anything. And she tries to surround herself with a supportive environment and will always be emotionally self-supporting. So this is a great placement. Next up is her Uranus in Aquarius. And with this placement, she tends to like to take on a lot of social causes and find ways of solving a complex issue such as poverty or injustice. This is actually a very great placement to have Uranus in because it is ruled by Aquarius. So with this placement, I think it does make sense because she is the type of person who does go after issues that really does have a lot to do with the masses, what a lot of people on a whole really have to go through. And she loves to talk about those issues, tackle those issues. And she's also the type of person who can be very revolutionary in her lifetime so she is going to make sure that everything in her lifetime works out for her and she's going to do things that other people previously have not done or if they have done it she's going to make sure that it comes out in the best way and in the most improved way next up is her neptune in aquarius so with this placement she's also someone who's very innovative she's going to try her best to do things that other people have not done she is also going to find inspiration in wherever she goes and she's always thinking about ways to help society she's also someone who is very much idealistic in regards to how they have the ability to remain detached as well as their ability to be objectively 
analyze the things of any general situation. So that detachment does come a lot with Aquarius placement. And she's also able to have a effort on her part to cure the ills of society as a whole. But she's very careful to continue to maintain and protect the rights of individuals in the midst of any of these changes. So this really does describe her and the generation that she's in. Next up is her Pluto and Sagittarius. So she's been able to gain this placement because she was born between 1995 and 2008. And with this placement, she tends to like a lot about freedom. As well as her generation, they love to experiment in different things. They love to explore. And this comes with Sagittarius placement, Sagittarius energy, because they do love to explore. She loves to take risk as well. She's very optimistic. And she does have a thrill of living and possibilities. A lot of topics that she would think about is globalization, immigration, and foreign affairs. She's also the type of person who's always on the search to add to her wealth of knowledge and to her enjoyment. That's something that she's great at because she knows a lot about the rights to pursue her own course in life that is reasserted a lot. And she is the type of person who knows about her rights and anything in music. Next up is her North Node in Virgo, and in order for her to develop the attributes or gifts needed, she will need to develop this in her North Node. So she'll need to have a lot of participation, she'll need to have a lot of bringing order to chaos, she loves to create routines, so that's something that she'll need to do. Focus on the here and the now, acting on feelings of compassion being of service to others, analyzing and categorizing, gaining self-confidence through experience, having a lot of moderation for herself, taking risk in spite of her fears, noting and valuing details, accepting the reality of daily life, learning the way of the healer, and helping to heal their pain and turn to heal others, connect to her inner perfection, pursue life with clarity, and just being the best practical healer. Next up is her Chiron in Scorpio. And with this placement, she tends to have the wound of control, of dying and death. And it could be also being that she has the wound of not finding a solution to an issue. So because she has the wound of control, it can be at times in regards to her career or in regards to how she perceives herself or how she wants the world to perceive her. And sometimes she does have issues in regards to how the world sees her. Because on the national scale that she is on, a lot of people will give her criticism and try to help her to be the best she can. And she can also have the fear of dying and death. And that comes with a Scorpio placement. So with this, she will have to realize that death is just another level. And death is another way of life. And also with her control, she just knows that she is in control of her life. Next up is her ascendant slash rising in Virgo. And with this placement, she tends to be very logical. She's also someone who's very helpful. She's very neat. That is a Virgo placement, which is being neat and very helpful. She's very precise in what she would like. She's very practical. She's very organized and she can be very critical. She's someone who's very reserved and shy in new settings, and she is a shy person, but she's also very nice and sweet. She can appear to be detached or critical. She is sensitive to bodily discomfort. She may be a picky eater. She's someone who's great at pinpointing details, and she's also someone who can be overly worrisome and high strung, but she's someone who's very dependable. She does not like public displays of affection, but she's attracted to those in need. She's going to make sure that she helps anyone who needs help. Last but not least is her midheaven in Gemini. And with this placement, she's someone who's going to get into an occupation that maybe she can change later on in life. This is something that is very great for her midheaven because she's someone who's going to want to do different things. She's not going to stay in one occupation and she's going to be able to just do different things. It's something that is very great for her. 
She's someone who's very adaptable in regards to her career. She's someone who's very imaginative, very curious, very quick, very optimistic. She loves juggling tasks, finding the words, keeping you informed. And she is someone who's going to change different occupations. She may go to one but come back to the previous one. And this really helps her because she was talking about doing different things in regards to music or doing different things that doesn't have to do with music. So this is something that is in her alleyway and being imaginative really helps with her music career as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting my video today. And please let me know down below that you learn more about Chloe Bailey. Did you get a better understanding as to who she is as a person? Please let me know down below who else you guys would want me to do a natal chart analysis on. Thank you guys so much for your support. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell. Also, please make sure you hit that like button because I know you guys will love it. And also, please make sure you share this video with everyone you know. And if you have not yet followed me on all of my social media accounts, please make sure you're doing so. Make sure you're following me from my Pinterest account down to my TikTok. Also, please make sure you're supporting my Etsy store and my PayPal. They're all linked down below. I love you all. Please stay safe and healthy. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye lovelies.